Hey, I'm Tim Foote, CEO of Slingshot Group, where we partner with churches and ministries to find and coach great leaders and build remarkable teams and healthy culture. I'm joined again by Ted Vaughan, one of the founders of Historic, a brand strategy, design, and culture consultancy that specializes in faith-based nonprofits. Ted is also co-author of Amazon's bestseller, Culture Built My Brand, a book about the intersection of brand, strategy, and organizational culture. Ted and I talked at the start of this series about the larger idea of culture and brand. Now, after chatting about retention, culture clarity, and culture busters or assassins, we're going to conclude with some final thoughts around how to dial this in for your context. So, Ted, let's first focus on a concept that's big in the marketplace, which is employee branding. How does that apply to the ministry space? So, employee branding is when your brand promise, your value prop, your mission, when those things are as important and meaningful to the employee as they are to the new customer or new member. Mm -hmm. Organizations put lots of energy into acquiring new people, new members, Mm -hmm. new donors, new customers. Often we forget about the employee and how important they are to the brand. In this moment of great resignation, of transition, of quiet quitting, employee branding has grown in significance because it's a way for employers to deliver on the value, to increase the experience and the quality of culture, which helps retain great people, attract Mm. great people, and ultimately make great people even better. Mm. So uh, employee branding is um, not only important today, it will be important for at least another decade. Mm. So Ted, to super simplify it, I guess you could say employee branding is how people experience our organization. Yeah, I would take it even deeper. It's how they experience the organization, but it's also how they find even greater value and meaning in the mission of the organization. Even for-profit companies like Patagonia, Southwest Mm. Airlines, they have taken mission to a whole new level, deepening employee engagement. We in the church or the the mission space, we need to be even more cognizant of that because we have people doing a job for reasons that go beyond just the paycheck. Mm. So we have to be even more thoughtful about their experience, their investment, their engagement, because often we can't compete Mm. on price. We compete on culture, right? But we've always competed on culture. It's Mm. not a new idea. I think we're just starting to awaken to how to take it more seriously, be Mm. more intentional. Yeah. I think we said in one of the other episodes that so often we get so focused on those we're serving, which we should be, that we forget about those we're serving with. Mm. And before we know it, culture has become dysfunctional, bordering on toxic. Talk about how values play into this. You know, so often we walk into a church or a ministry organization behind the scenes and we see the values on the wall, but it's much more than that, right? Yeah, values are really important. You need to be defined by something, held accountable by something. Your values differentiate you. They give you purpose and meaning. The challenge is that often values have been vague, abstract, one-word ideas Mm -hmm. that don't translate to clear behavioral standards. So we have people who are either hiding behind an abstract value with no Mm. accountability, or they're defining it in their own unique way. And 10 people define one value 10 different ways, and it doesn't really shape a consistent culture. And we have a lot of uh, muscle memory from corporate value culture, like you know Enron of days gone by, a financial institution with the value of integrity, chiseled into the marble. And of Mm. course, many of their leaders went to prison for a lack of integrity, right? So Mm. millennials and Gen Z today, I think have a little bit of a skepticism and cynicism towards broad corporate values that don't seem to really shape a meaningful culture. Mm. So reconcile that with the statement that values are only as effective as they are clear. Mm. How does that apply to this next generational workforce. So in our book, uh, Culture Built My Brand, we talk about principles, principles being the sticky behaviors that ultimately tether to values. Some organizations that we work with ditch their values in favor of principles that are very clear, specific, actionable behaviors. Is that just a play on words, values, principles? Are they one of the same thing? They, Yeah, absolutely. And, mm. and if you have values and those values need to stick, 
then then keep them, but make sure that there are principles mm-hmm. or behaviors. And, and frankly, nomenclature, language, we call them principles, call them values, call them core values. It kind of doesn't matter. What matters is that you have clear behaviors that you hold people accountable to, because if you don't, your values are more rhetoric mm. than reality. Mm. So hopefully people watching today have watched the other episodes mm. and they're starting to go, okay, how do we put this into practice? How do we pay attention to our brand and the state of our culture? What's some scaffolding we can build that's going to keep us accountable to, to, to healthy culture? What's some architecture, mm. I guess, if you like? I love to imagine a beautifully designed building or home, right? Think of your favorite architect or your favorite building. And then just imagine the HVAC, the conduit for the electricity, the plumbing, just kind of being slapped in there with no regard for design or aesthetic or elegance, right? It'd be offensive, even to the most, you know, in uh, uneducated of uh, architects or designers, they would see that as something's wrong. Mm. And yet we do that in our organizations all the time. We take HR, hiring, on-ramping, performance reviews, and we just kind of cut and paste these things into our organization and hope that they fit, mm. hope that they work. At minimum, we're missing an opportunity for our systems and structures, for our architecture to be integrated and designed in a meaningful way that better adds value to employees, that supports a branded experience that furthers the mission tailored to your organization. HR, hiring, these are not just cut and paste, one size fits all practices. Mm. You gotta get creative about it. And how do you get creative? How do you find out? Well, it it may seem obvious, but listening to your people. Mm. I think often we, drive and drive and drive in the church, 52 Sundays a year, Christmas and Easter, extra work. You know, we finally get Thanksgiving Eve and somebody wants a pie service. Mm. In in the faith-based marketplace or other spaces that are even driven by Christians, we still have delivery deadlines, tyranny of the urgent that get in the way. And what ends up happening is, is we don't, as leaders, listen to our employees. We don't Mm. ask them questions to say, How could you find greater meaning here? How could we mitigate barriers? Mm. How might your sense of satisfaction and reward in this role be increased? Mm. Uh, I think if we blue sky, round table, listened to our people more than we do, we might hear fantastic ideas and ways to deepen their experience and increase their appreciation in the process. So Ted, you've already hinted at this, and I think this will be a full circle from the start of the series. What's one thing that leaders and teams can do today to improve their employee brand and their overall culture? We already talked about asking better questions and listening. One helpful technique for any senior leader is to identify the people who operate at the the level of organization where they have low power, low authority. For whatever reason, they're just not operating with a great deal of authority or influence or power. Mm -hmm. Bring them together and ask them questions around their experience, around how things could be made more meaningful or how we could reduce barriers, and then truly listen, write notes down, then meet with your HR or your organizational culture people and begin to understand how we could begin to improve our systems, how we could fix our architecture, how we could redesign things to improve their experience. And if you as a senior leader, are seen listening and making improvements based on somebody in the organization who operates with little to no authority, that sends a message Mm. up the flagpole that you truly care about the culture and the people in your organization. Mm. So as we conclude this whole series, I want you to respond to some of these statements Mm. and unpack them a little bit for me, rapid fire. First, culture determines the strength of your team. 100% culture is the soil that every team member and every decision they make is planted in. Mm. You absolutely need to clarify your culture and who you are. Yes. Culture is both health and clarity. You can't sustain health if you're unclear. You can't sustain clarity if your people are afraid to tell you the truth. Mm. Health and clarity, the intersection of both is where culture comes alive. Mm. You need to ruthlessly eliminate the things that dilute your brand. Yes, and not just the things that dilute your brand, the people that dilute your brand. There are brand busters. There are brand assassins. Mm. 
Often it's the result of somebody who refuses to grow their self-awareness, who refuses to grow their empathy. Those people have to be addressed and shown the door, even if they add tremendous value in some aspect of your organization. Mm -hmm. So Ted, let's come full circle. We've had these conversations. Give us a why this matters statement to conclude things on brand and culture. I love this quote from Simon Sinek. He says, uh, customers and members will never love an organization until the employees love it first. Mm -hmm. I think that's a true statement. I think it's always been true, but I think it's more true today than ever before. Uh, again, those generational shifts have made employee branding, organizational culture, not just good or positive, but non-optional. Mm. We have to address these things. And if we don't, we will continue to struggle with hiring, retention, sideways energy, drama, triangulation, all the stuff that becomes a culture buster. Mm. To, our missions are too important mm. to struggle through all of that stuff. Because how you operate internally affects how you present externally. Your people are the face of your brand. No matter what you say, no matter what you communicate, when you experience them, you experience the brand in more powerful ways than any social media post or website could ever communicate. Mm. How your people experience your culture is so important. And if you wanna know this, just ask them. Be relational and collaborative and start doing that today because culture is created person to person. In other words, care deeply about how your people experience your church or ministry organization. And in all things, stay curious and reach for the remarkable.